Ukraine owes Russia $3 billion, a sizable debt to be sure, and one which our commentator today, here on the press review, says Moscow is using to try to blackmail Kiev. Martin Wolf explains more, writing in the Financial Times. He describes the situation between Russia and Ukraine like this. On a flimsy pretext, a country seizes some of a neighbor's territory and foments a civil war in the rest. But it also insists that if a debt incurred by its ruined victim is not paid in full, it will veto the international assistance its actions have made vital. This is how Russia is behaving towards Ukraine. That too is barefaced cheek. It is also blackmail. But as Martin tells us, that is not all. He writes, the story is worse even than this. Today, Russia apparently wants the international community to fund repayment in full of money advanced to cajole Ukraine into making an unnecessary choice of Russia over Europe. In reality, however, Russia wants to veto a planned $17.5 billion loan from the International Monetary Fund aimed at helping the country it has sought to ruin. Martin is adamant that Russia's blackmail on the loan is just another manifestation of the Kremlin's undesirable approach to geopolitics. He explains that the West must take a stand with the words, the Russian government believes it is entitled to seize territory by force. The West must reject this doctrine. The current Russian government despises Western beliefs that individuals have political rights and that governments exist to serve and obey the people. The West must not concur. Martin praises the current Ukrainian government and says that it is doing a good job, in spite of all the obstacles, not least of which is Russia's attempts at blackmail over Ukraine's debt. He writes, The current government of Ukraine inherited a dreadful legacy of more than two decades of gross corruption and incompetence. Ukraine had been more a carcass to be plundered than a country. Now it has suffered both invasion and civil war. Nevertheless, despite a devastating economic shock, it has made some progress. So our commentator today echoes a message we have heard in a number of forms in the past 18 months since Ukraine's pro-EU uprising. It boils down to this. The West must stand strong and not allow Russia to flaunt the accepted ways and norms of the international order. Ukraine is, in this, a key battleground, and the EU, the US and their allies must do all they can to help Ukraine be successful. That's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow for another press review. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today.